In this video, we're going to start with this view made in Rhino and develop a story for what the people are doing in the rendering and end up with this composition featuring people that look like they were hand drawn but are actually a hybrid of hand drawing and images from the internet. But let me give you a little sense of this project first because that's the source of the stories I tell with the entourage of my renderings. So we're inserting a community event space into this University of Akron building on the left. Here's the angle of the view we were just looking at. Here's the street. Here's the entrance to the new facility. You come around here and you see this performing arts center. But you come in this side, the day-to-day -day side, and this is a Starbucks or something here. So our view is looking here through the Starbucks at this theater space. Room itself, here's that circular performance ring. Here's the Starbucks in the foreground. I usually begin by doing very rough blob sketching where I'd like to see people in the space, balancing the need to portray the activities of a coffee shop, but not covering up any of the important architectural elements. Once I know what kind of figures I need where, I do a quick search online I save a bunch of them to my photos or to my iCloud drive so I'm ready to test them and drop them into the rendering. With the rendering loaded and all set to go I can start adding some of these figures from my photos library. Then one by one insert them into the drawing comparing them to the placement I had in my imagination, rescaling them, moving them around with the move tool until they're close enough to my red blob sketch. And I'll speed this up a bit to show you the whole process. Normally it's not this much work, but I really want to show you all the steps involved. And it is kind of fun once you get into the swing of things. Now I've been estimating the size of each image so far, but in order to maintain a proper illusion of perspective, I need to find the eye level or horizon line of this rhino view. And I do this by adding a layer, then tracing along several major parallel lines until they cross at what will become the left or the right vanishing point of the drawing. With a five foot high horizon line established, I know from the laws of perspective that a line drawn from this line down to any point on the floor will measure exactly five feet high at that location which allows me to place the eyes of anybody standing at that level and to place the eyes and heads of seated people at about two-thirds of that height. Scaling and adjusting each image like this may seem tedious, but it's actually kind of fun, and you may find yourself talking to the characters the same way Bob Ross talks to his little trees and clouds. As it becomes clear which part of each image I'm going to use, I'll use the selection tool in rectangular mode, then I'll invert that selection, and then I'll use the famous three fingers swipe to trim away the excess so I can start to see everything more clearly. Now I'll go back to each image I imported and place it more accurately with respect to the horizon line and keeping in mind that early bubble diagram I did of where I'd like to see the people. This involves a lot of scaling and moving around but it's very satisfying when you get to the end. Once the images are in their final position I'll go back into each layer and trim away any remaining background, usually trying the selection tool in automatic mode first, but that doesn't always work so great when the backgrounds are close in value to the figures. So I'll often come back with the selection tool in freehand mode, and then invert the selection and use the three finger swipe to get rid of that. Of course you can always mix and match the automatic and freehand tools, whatever it takes to work as quickly as possible. I usually don't like to work this hard to prepare any one single figure when there are so many figures to do, but it's a great demonstration of how to use these tools, and it also shows you how important it is to get just the right figures in just the right position in order to really bring the story of the rendering alive. Let's take a look at this freehand selection process again. Start by tapping the selection icon. Make sure you're in freehand mode, then trace around the figure you want to free it up from the background. I'm using the tap and straight line strategy to even go around this table, even though I'm not sure I'll use the entire table. 
Instead of the three finger swipe, I'm going to tap the copy and paste button at the bottom to lift the selected portion of the image out and automatically save it to a new layer. Then after reducing the opacity of the layer, I situate that person perfectly with respect to that table that's already in the Rhino drawing. And now I'll do the same for the rest of the individual images in my library file there, allowing this fella to sit on that stool, knowing I can trim away that excess later, and generally fine-tuning the position of all these figures so they really tell the story I want them to tell. Now that we've got each figure in its final position, it's time to add the hand-drawn ink line around each figure. Now this effect brings the figures into harmony with the general hand-drawn character of the rendering, so you don't have the jarring contrast of a photo inserted into an otherwise hand-drawn rendering. With a figure ready, now I select a line weight for the pen that's a little stronger than the line weight of the drawing itself, so all the figures will stand out in slight relief against the line weight of the Rhino drawing. Next I drop the opacity of the figure so I'll be able to see the lines I draw on the layer above with greater clarity. Then I enlarge the figure and move it around so my hand is in the most comfortable position when I trace the outline of the figure. You will of course have your own style of doing this since no two artists do this the same. But the general idea is to keep your line work loose and flowing, following the profile of the figure just closely enough to pick up some interesting details like the texture of this hair but not so close as to take all day doing it. The trick is to avoid capturing so much detail that you distract from the overall story of the rendering. And even though I just drew these in, I'll probably delete these facial features later. Adding just a few folds and wrinkles to the clothing also gives a nice touch of detail without becoming too literal. It's all just a matter of practice and finding out whatever level of detail works best for you. I'll speed up this last part so we can get on to the good part, bringing the color back. But you'll get used to this after a while. And tracing just as much finger and just as much folding in the clothing as you need. It really can be a lot of fun. I'll use the two finger pinch to get back to full drawing size so I can see how my line weight turned out relative to the drawing. Uh, this looks a little weak to me so I'm going to duplicate the layer then merge the two copies to make the lines a little stronger. Now the photo still has a lot of background artifacts so I'm going to use the selection tool in freehand mode to trace around the figure one last time, invert that selection, then three finger swipe and delete those last few artifacts of the photo. Sometimes adjusting the opacity of the original image in the layers menu makes the figure look a little more hand drawn to my eye. So play with all these factors when you develop your own style. There are all kinds of tricks you can try to make it seem more like an illustration and less like a photo that's been traced. So I'll duplicate this layer to keep a safe copy below. Then I'll select the layer content so any experiments I do to the duplicated layer above are contained within the boundaries of the photo. Then in this example I'm going to try a Gaussian blur on the layer above because I'm always looking for some effect I can find inside Procreate that will save time making these composite figures in the future. But when I turn off the lower layer I see that my Gaussian blur has basically made the photo too light and washed out. So I'll turn that layer off and try something else. I really love fooling around like this because by playing around this is how I have discovered many of the tips and tricks that have made my life easier and that I love sharing with all of you. Let's do a quick recap and figure out how we got from this street in Akron to this line drawing in Revit to this final rendering in Procreate and let's use video replay to tell us that story. Oh and by the way don't forget to sign up for information about my upcoming online course. The Procreate course is designed to show architects how the iPad can make hand designing and drafting and rendering relevant again in the modern digital office era. And it will provide step-by-step -step instruction in using the iPad and Procreate to design and draw by hand in a faster, better, and more relevant way. I'll put a link to learn more in the description below. 
And if you have an interest in Morfolio Trace 2, then please check out this video you see here.